Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. Our number 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about skin health issues or formulations or ingredients, if you have, if you have a problem patient or client that you need help with, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. And if you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can go to brightsideben.com and order products right off the website, likewise pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben phone team or Brightside Ben team by calling the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. For a one-time $25 fee, you can have yourself a longevity business, get your products at the wholesale price, and enjoy all of the tax benefits associated with having your own business. And you can help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, all while, all while earning thank you checks and changing lives and making people's lives a little bit better. If you've enjoyed the products, if you've enjoyed the longevity products and noticed results and notice that you're off your medication and notice that you have more energy and notice that your blood pressure has dropped and you're losing weight, now you can earn a living helping other people achieve those same benefits. Call 866-735-2470 and they can tell you all about it. All right. We are talking about the steroid hormones, specifically DHEA known as the mother of all hormones because of its really, really important role when it comes to making hormones. Specifically, it's the building block for sex and fertility hormones, for anabolic hormones, that is building hormones. The body's always in breakdown mode and build up mode in a kind of balance. And by pushing that balance over to the building side, the anabolic side, that's where you, your growth and repair come in. That's where you feel better. That's where youth and anti-aging come in, come into play. DHEA shifts that equation over, or that balance over, to the building side, to the anabolic side. It's your youth and anti-aging hormone. And using it can provide really significant benefits for muscle building, for bone building, for brain health, for weight loss. It's an anti-inflammatory. It supports the immune system. And what all these markers of health have, brain health and bone health and muscle health, immune system health, what all of these uh, markers have in common is that they're secondary. No one just has an immune problem whether it's an autoimmune disease or immune deficiency disease like shingles or, or, or AIDS, if you're getting frequent cold sores, nobody just has an immune problem. Likewise, no one just has heart disease. No one just is obese. No one just has Alzheimer's dementia. These are all secondary health challenges. And you can no more reverse or cure a secondary health challenge without addressing the fundamental causes, then you can fix a dying rose bush by treating the leaves. What we call disease are really the symptoms and the signs of something underneath. They're byproducts. What we call diseases are byproducts. This is what we talked about yesterday. Byproducts of underlying causes. causes. They're secondary. The specifics, when you understand this, when we, when we finally nail this thing down, that our diseases are byproducts, 
it will make our specifics, the names of our disease, the diagnosis, the, more, the test scores, it will make all of these completely irrelevant when it comes to restoring the body back to health back to balance, back to its ability to go up when it needs to go up and down when it needs to go down, to pull the downs up and the ups downs. That's called homeostasis. The body's constantly pulling the ups down and the downs up and it wants to stay right in the middle, it wants to stay stable. And the system that does that is called the homeostasis system. Homeo meaning the same, or homeo meaning the same as, and stasis meaning moving or not moving, staying at the same level. Homeostasis is when the body's chemistry stays at the same level. When we're sick, our homeostasis is messed up. We're not staying at the same level. The ups are staying up or the downs are staying down. They're not, they're not uh, uh, stabilizing themselves back to normal. So, or back to where they should be. From a reversal perspective, the specifics of our test scores don't matter. Test scores are irrelevant. How you feel is your personal test score. Are you bloated after you eat? Are you tired after you eat? Do you lack energy? Are you in pain? Do you have migraine headaches? Do you have problems with your periods? Are you, uh, are, do you have insomnia? Are you have problems falling asleep? Is your skin dry? Are you losing your hair? Are your nails weak? Do you have chest pains? These are the markers of health and we don't need a doctor to assess those. We just need to notice, really, we don't need a TSH score. We don't need a bone mineral density test. We don't need a 24 hour cortisol. These are scams. These are ways of extracting our money and we don't need them to get healthy. This is why I repeat myself every day on this program. And whenever I do a presentation, I just repeat myself over and over and over again. And I feel silly sometimes, but repetition is reinforcement. And we're so bombarded with these ideas that we have specific illnesses and specific diseases and specific foundations and specific protocols and specific drugs. We're bombarded with these ideas that I have to repeat myself. We don't need a doctor. The medical model is useless. This is for chronic long-term degenerative diseases, which is 80% of our, of, of our illnesses, of our healthcare costs. The vast majority of our sickness is chronic long-term progressive disease, and you don't need a doctor to reverse these things. The medical model is useless, really, but it doesn't matter because we have power over our bodies and over our health by asking the right questions, by noticing our bodies, by noticing trends. This is also important. How are we getting better or are we getting worse? If we're getting better, we're on the right track. If we're getting worse, we got to do something. You don't need a doctor for that. Just by adding some basic common sense strategies and rituals and habits to our day-to-day -day lives, good habits, that's really what it's about. It's about good habits, good rituals, supplementing every morning, deep breathing when we're under stress, uh, rebounding or going to the gym, relaxing the body. These are all the things that are just so simple. They're part of our lifestyle. They can be part of our lifestyle. They're lifestyle issues. Everyone can get better on their own. This is the one big message of the bright side. When we restore our body's chemistry to where it needs to be, to its normal state of health using generic, basic strategies that leverage nutrition, oxygen, and respiration, eliminating toxicity or not putting toxicity into the body, relaxing the body, and the survival slash emergency nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system, correct thoughts and feelings, all, A-L-L, -L, all chronic progressive degenerative diseases will reverse themselves. The notion of taking a drug, the notion of yanking out an organ, the notion of ablating the heart, the notion of using these medical strategies that somehow corrupt the body to make it better. I, I mean, that, that just never made sense to me. In pharmacy school, I could not understand how this logic worked that we would poison the body to make it better. When we finally nail this thing down, it's going to be so, it's going to be like the guy with the VA commercial where you hit your head and side of your head. You go, oh my God, this is so simple. What am I thinking? All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010, you're listening to The Bright Side. Got lines open for you, by the way. We'll be back, uh, we'll be back, take a quick break and we'll be back after this.
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel made with vitamin C and retinol and no fillers or waxes or silicone or oil or preservative or fragrance or water or anything your skin doesn't need or doesn't want, you don't have to, shouldn't have to pay for ingredients that you're not using. Everything in our True Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, is active and functional and going to make a difference on your skin, and that's why you'll notice results pretty darn quickly. Truth Retinol 5% Gel will exfoliate away blemishes, dark spots. It will help anti-age the skin. Retinols are the major player when it comes to retinoids, I should say, or the major player when it comes to... Uh, stimulating collagen production and keeping skin cells growing at just the right pace. And when you mix them up with vitamin C, when you mix your retinol with vitamin C, you get double benefits because vitamin C not only helps do the same thing, but vitamin C has got its own collagen stimulating, collagen stimulating properties. With vitamin C, you do have to have a fat soluble form to really leverage the skin health benefits. That's because all the action in the skin is under the skin surface. Believe it or not, the surface of your skin is dead. It's lined with dead cells. It's lined with a very microscopically thin layer of fingernail. Imagine that. Just take a picture of your fingernail, how hard that is, right? And uh, just imagine a microscopically thin layer of fingernail on the surface of your skin, and you can kind of see why most skincare products can't work. How's anything going to get through a fingernail? Well, if anything's going to get through a fingernail, it's got to have a fatty nature to it. And even then, you really need to enhance the penetration using ingredients, transdermal enhancing ingredients. This is what we learn in pharmacy school. One of the things we learn in pharmacy school is how to drive things in through the stratum corneum into the lower levels of the skin, ultimately in pharmacy, into the blood. We'll talk later about how DHEA works topically. You can get wonderful benefits by using DHEA topically, not just for the skin. You can get great benefits for the skin, but you can actually get DHA into the blood if you have a, a, a correctly formulated product that leverages transdermal science, that leverages the, the technology of driving things through the skin surface, through the fingernail. And it's high tech. It's, it takes a lot. I have, a, I have textbooks that are thousands of pages uh, large on transdermal technology, on how you drive material through the skin. It's hardcore science, and it's something that uh, pharmacists study, and that I've been made it a, uh, my personal um, specialty over the last 32 years. Anyway, truthskinhealthproducts.com, uh, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. You can find out all about our Truth Skin Health products. Okay, so we're talking about the secondary nature of disease. I think this is really important. This is this is my message to the world as a pharmacist. And this is what I want the bright side to be about. The idea that when we restore our body's chemistry back to its normal state with generic lifestyle strategies, including nutrition and eliminating toxicity and relaxing the body, all the things we talk about on this program all the time, thinking correct thoughts, spirituality, don't underestimate the power of spirituality. These fundamental concepts of health are the way to get healthy, the way to get well, no matter what our health challenges are. If they're as minor as, as, as dry skin or acne, or they're as major as cancer, whatever it is, these are the basic ideas that we all need to employ. And the, the notion that the medical model can save us is perpetuated by the medical model itself. There's a comedian named Emo Phillips. I used to think he was, this guy was really funny. Emo Phillips, Google him, or YouTube him, Emo, E-M-O Phillips. And he has this one joke, he goes, he has this funny way of talking. Goes, I used to think my brain was my most important organ. And then I realized what was telling me that. And that's the same idea with the medical model. We think the medical model is all that in a bag of chips. Who's telling us that? The medical model. They're not helping anybody. They're telling us how great they are. A classic example of this idea of treating byproducts uselessly is, is in psychiatry. In fact, all of psychiatry, the medical model, the, the stupidity of the medical model's surgical pharmaco uh, uh, healing protocols using surgery and, and drugs to heal the body and radiation to heal the body is comes to its zenith, its, its most uh, I iconic representation when it comes to psychiatry. If there's nothing the medical model can do for, for chronic degenerative disease, there's less than nothing that psychiatry can do, except drug you out. 
And there's no way to even know if you're psychiatrically ill. Even doctors look down their nose at psychiatrists. I mean, even regular doctors. Psychiatry had to, they had a really hard time. They had a really hard sell back in the, uh, 18, uh, in the middle of the 1800s uh, when, it, when it really got going. Middle of the 1800s, late, late 19th century, right around in there, early 20th century. They had a real tough go with the regular doctors. Nobody, the psychiatry, man, they had a real problem. Because you can't, how are you going to really assess a psychiatric problem? There's no scores. There's no tests. And nobody, you know, the idea of, of interviewing your patient, that doesn't fly. You've got to have quantification. So uh, the ultimate classic example, I should say, of, of an attempt to treat a byproduct health issue are antidepressants. Do you know there's like one out of 10 Americans are an antidepressant? How do we get so depressed? What are we so darn depressed? I mean, I could see why people would be depressed, but to be medicated, that's that kind of serious depression. I'm not talking about being sad. I'm talking about long depression is like chronic long-term sadness. Now I haven't, I've never been depressed for more than a few days, so I can't really speak to it, but it sure doesn't sound very good. Anyway, one out of 10 Americans are on an antidepressant and almost every week you see another study that talks about how antidepressants are basically placebos at best. And at worst, they're a source of side effects, dramatic ones like killing people or killing yourself. Yes, suicidal ideations is a major side effect of antidepressants. Murdering people, homicide, especially mass homicides, these, these crazy shootings that we have, almost all of them are on an antidepressant. The reason for the failure of these kinds of drugs is based on the idea that depression is a byproduct. It's secondary. Depression in and of itself is not a biochemical disease. And don't believe anyone who tells you this nonsense about your, your brain chemicals are out of balance. Your hormones are out of balance. There's no, there's no balance. Your brain chemicals are constantly fluctuating. If you are depressed or you have some anxiety or bipolar disorder, your brain is working just fine. It's doing just what it's supposed to do. There's no brain issue unless you have some kind of organic tumor or organic problem, like you have a tumor or something like that, or a mechanical issue, you get hit in the head. Other than that, if you have bipolar disorder or you have anxiety, your brain is working just fine. If you have depression, your brain is working just fine. It's doing what it's supposed to do. It's reading the blood. If you're depressed, this is what's happening. Your brain, aside, and I'm not talking sadness here, by the way. This is a very important distinction. It's normal to be sad if something happens. That's just an emotion. Mo emotions move. Emotion, energy and motion. They're supposed to move. Depression is when they don't move. The emotion just stays there. And that is a ba the basis of depression. And this is why anti there's nothing psychiatrists can do. The basis of depression is your brain reading the blood. The, blood, the brain is constantly reading the blood to assess what it's supposed to be doing. It's also reading the environment. Between reading the environment and reading the blood, the, the brain gets all the information it needs to do its business. If you have bipolar disorder or anxiety, the brain's doing its business. It's just reading the blood a certain way. That means there's stuff in your blood. Oh, what could that be? Considering how we all eat and live our lives. And it's also seeing the environment through, through the, 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 the sympathetic nervous system, through the stress nervous system. There's nothing wrong with the brain. It isn't a chemical imbalance. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com. Got four plus years of programs, uh, five plus years of programs at brightsideben.com. You can also purchase longevity products off of our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. And if you, uh, you want to take a look at some super high-end skin health products, head over to truthtreatments.com, check out our... Truth 5% Retinol Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Balm, all made with lots of vitamin C. And our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, of course, is made with lots of retinol as well. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. From, uh, hang tight if you're on hold. We do have uh, well, we've got a, a bunch of open lines for you if you want to get on board. From the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, cravings for high-calorie foods may be switched off in the brain by new supplement. What is that new supplement? It's something called inulin propionate. 
Inulin is a fiber. It's found in lots of veggies. And propionate is one of those short chain fatty acids that we've talked about in the past, along with butyric acid and acetic acid, which you get from apple cider vinegar. These short chain fatty acids are really important for digestive health, but they're also important for shutting off your appetite. This is the basis of the ketogenic diet. It helps, or one of the bases, there's a few, but one of the basis of the keto, bases of the ketogenic diet is that it helps you helps the body produce these SCFAs, short chain fatty acids, one of which is propionic acid. Well, now they got a supplement and you can actually get these ketogenic, uh, ketogenic supplements now, ketones, raspberry ketones, and they uh, purport to be appetite suppressants. You don't need a, su a special supplement necessarily. Eating lots of veggies is a great way to upregulate your own short chain fatty acids. Eating a lot of veggies and fiber. Veggie, this is why veggie juices can be not only an important source of nutrition, easy to absorb nutrition, and not only filling and thereby helping you lose weight because they fill you up, but they also can help the body make these short chain fatty acids. That's why vegetables and fermented vegetables especially are a good source of these short chain fatty acids. Fermented vegetables are one of the all time great diet foods and fermented veg uh, beverages like kefir and by the way, the Swero V cleanse. One of Jordan Rubin's, maybe Jordan Rubin's greatest insight and he's got a lot of great insights. That guy's brilliant, I have to say. Uh, one of his greatest insights was understanding the importance of these short chain fatty acids and good bacteria and the relationship they all have to good health. He cured himself of Crohn's disease. And I don't know if, you're, don't know if you've ever seen his pictures, but they're pretty dramatic. You see him uh, on, on the before picture and he looks like a guy from a concentration camp. And you see him on the after picture, after which he healed himself, by the way, using these ideas. He looks like an Olympic athlete. So you go from, you go from one state to another simply by doing a few tweaks to your digestive system, one of which is making sure you're getting enough fermented food and veggies via this, uh, at least one mechanism is this short chain fatty acid mechanism. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Texas and welcome Lily to the bright side. We do have lines open for you, by the way. Lily, what's going on? Hi, um, what I'm, can you hear me? No, I can barely hear you, Lily. Okay. Okay, I took you off the speaker. Okay, much now? better, much better, yes. Okay. Well, thank you, first of all, um, for all the different views that you've showed us. Like, my family has learned so much, and so have I. Oh, but, nice. Um, I have a really intense case with my son right now. He was diagnosed with MRSA. Okay. Oh, that's that's awful. And, yeah, yeah, MRSA. It's, it's pretty bad. That's and not... He got an, sorry. He got an oh. abscess and um, needed surgery. It was about a 10-minute surgery, but it was about the scariest 10 minutes of my life. So. I bet. Where was the abscess? The abscess was um, near his hip and between his penis. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. And it sorry. was the size of my pinky when we took him to the emergency room. Like, tiny, tiny, the tip of my finger. Do you and know what the MR and MRSA is for? MRSA, MRSA, by the way, for the listeners. You know what the yeah. MR stands for? What does it mean? It stands for methicillin resistant. That means, and the SA stands for Staph aureus. Staph aureus is a type of bacteria. Methicillin is like penicillin, a type of antibiotic. The key word is resistant. This is called bacterial resistance. And what's happened over the last five or 10 years, really dramatically, but it started a while ago, start, probably started 20, 25 years ago. When I was in pharmacy school 30 years ago, we had a pharmacist who warned us, a, a professor who warned us about this. It's called antibiotic resistance. And it's a huge, it's about to become an even bigger problem. It's a huge problem now. People are, 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 people are dying because bacteria are no longer resistant to, are no longer susceptible. They become resistant. They're no longer susceptible to antibiotics. So, so uh, we got a big problem here and MRSA is one, of, uh, is one of those problems. So what you gotta do, Lily, it's extremely important that this kid, is, you, you focus on his immune system. If he has anything like eczema or asthma or snotty nose or ear infections, oh, he has none of that stuff? No, he was at home first. We had no problem until two years. And you breastfed? I'm sorry? You breastfed? Yes, I'm okay. still breastfeeding right now. Well, good for you. Good for you. Well, something's, cook something's cooking in his immune system. Okay, now, it was on the surface, and if it's on the surface, uh, if it's a skin issue, it's not necessarily, you know, it's not a guarantee there's something going on, but you want to be boosting that kid's immune system as best as you can. Well, yeah. Well, we actually have him on the 2.0 pack from Longevity. The tangy tangerine, Good deal. the osteo, we have Good. him on all that. We keep Good. giving him manuka honey, selenium. Stay away from the honey. Stay away from anything that throws off his blood sugar. 
uh, starchy foods, pasta, rice, potatoes, honey. Uh, I mean, if you have to do a little honey because kids, you know, they want the sweet, then do that. But well, me- it's, it's a it's a special honey. It's a medicinal the, honey. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter really. So honey is is sugar. There's stuff in it that's beneficial, probably. There's B vitamins and enzymes and such in honey. But still, it's a big hit of sugar that he doesn't need. Now, okay. I'm not saying zero tolerance on sugar. You know, you got to live right, but. You want to be very careful with it, especially if he's healing. So just be respectful of it. There's a there's mythology out there about honey. Honey has got things in it that are good, but as a net food, I don't know if I'd put it in the good category. You know what I'm saying? You see the difference? Okay. okay. Yeah. So, I, but but a little bit's not the end of the world. It's when it's chronic and long term, and there's high amounts of it. That's where you got to be careful. Okay. Okay. Get him on some. Get him on uh, extra vitamin C. Make sure he's doing probably 20. How how much does he weigh? How much does he weigh? He weighs 20 pounds. So see if you can get 5 or 10 milligrams of a zinc. See if you can find a liquid zinc for kids. I'll give him 5 or 10 milligrams of zinc a day. And then also uh, maybe some, see if you could find some liquid selenium somewhere. I don't, he, he, does he take pills? Yeah, he takes selenium already. Oh, he already takes that. Okay, then stay on that. Get yeah. him some liquid zinc and I get him some extra vitamin C. That's what I'd be doing. You know, there's a neat uh, longevity product. If you're doing longevity, it's got vitamin C in it. And, yeah, it uh, does. It's uh, it's just a vitamin C. You is you are you doing the longevity products in general? Yes. There's a vitamin C, and I'm trying to th- you know I have to get it for you on our next break. I forgot the name of it, but it, that might be something else that you want to do for him. Vitamin C is just crazy important. Okay. okay. Well, they actually gave me antibiotics for him, and I gave him the whole lot, even though I just like had a bell ringing in my head not to. Well, um, I just they gave wait a minute. They gave him it. antibiotics, even though he's he's resistant. It's, it's M- MRSA. Yeah. That's interesting. What did they give him? Well, at the first hospital uh, that I took him to, the emergency room, they just gave him amoxicillin and an ultrasound and said... Listen to the silliness of it, silly. Lily. Listen to the silly. Yeah. If you got, oh, they didn't know it was MRSA, maybe. Did they not know it was MRSA? No, they didn't know it was MRSA. They didn't even I see. That makes test. sense. They just okay. to get out. All right. Hours Hang on, Lily. we got to take a break. Hang on. We'll finish up when we come back, okay? I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Lily in Texas. Are you there, ma'am? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so a uh, couple, just keeping the sugar down, making sure that he's using the uh, probiotics, the good bacteria and fermented foods, if he can do that. Uh, and if you're breastfeeding, you can do a lot of stuff by you taking care of yourself and then passing through uh, good nutrition through the breast milk, fats especially. Yeah, I've been doing, I've Selen- been doing extra stuff too. Good but deal. I do have a specific question. The sure. doctors told me I needed to bathe him in bleach. Really? And I don't even, yeah, they, need, they said I needed to do a bleach bath. They actually gave me a recipe. A dilute solution so, of bleach. Like, yeah, a half a cup of bleach to one-fourth tub of water for 15 minutes every day. Okay. For three months and then two times a week a year. Or trying to kill a bacteria it seems kind of harsh. Uh, yeah, I don't even bleach my clothing. Yeah, it seems pretty harsh. Bleach, believe it or not, is an old-time pharmacy treatment for killing things. And as far as killing things go, it's it's better than antibiotics. But uh, you know, it kills things in a non-specific way. MRSA. Uh, methicillin resistant staph aureus and, and uh, resistant antibacteria uh, resistant bacteria are resistant to antibiotics but they're not resistant to just straight out killing things like bleach you, you follow yeah. like the high tech killing killing machines which antibiotics are killing systems those become those can uh, bacteria can develop resistance to they can't develop resistance to bleach bleach just kills things just just like explodes them so that's what they're thinking. I, you're on your own on that one, although I can tell you that as far as medicine goes, bleach is strong and toxic, but it's not, it doesn't have the same kind of, uh, uh, it's not like chemical warfare the way uh, drugs are. Go ahead, ma'am. Oh, I, that's the, I really need an alternative to that. I'm just scared of it. Uh, you know, you got to kill things. You got to kill things. That, that's just, if it is truly MRSA, you know, you have to decide how you want to handle that. Iodine might work for you. Try to ask them about doing iodine in water. Iodine? Okay. Lugol solution. Yeah, Lugol solution. Try that. Lugol? L as in Larry. U as in uncle. Okay. C as in cat. Or G as in girl. O as in okay. Oscar. L as in Larry. Lugol solution. It's an old-time pharmacy iodine remedy. Oh, okay. Awesome. Oh, okay. 
Good to talk to you, Lily. Hope, hope everything works out for you. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hang on. I'll get you in just a second. I found this really cool article. I just want to get to this real quick. And if you're on hold, hang tight. Uh, we'll get to you just momentarily. This is from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. I love this article. Stimulating the vagus nerve with a implantable bioelectronic device improved, significantly improved, the measures of disease activity in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so they stick a little piece of electric, little electrical device in your body that, that activates the vagus nerve. And this activation of the vagus nerve with this device results in a significant significantly improved measures of, uh, of symptomology, disease activity when you have rheumatoid arthritis. So you got to ask, what's the vagus nerve that's doing this? Why is the vagus nerve so important? What is the vagus nerve? The vagus nerve is your relaxation nerve. It's the main nerve that activates the parasympathetic nervous system. So what you're doing is you're turning on the relaxation nervous system electronically with a device. Well, guess what, guys? You don't need a device to do this. This is why I thought this article was so important. Rheumatoid arthritis is beyond miserable. It's miserable to even look at, let alone to be suffering with. And doctors can't do a thing about it. They can give you drugs that shut down your immune system. Brilliant. Brilliant strategy, doc. Brilliant. So now it turns out that activating the relaxation nervous system gives you benefits for rheumatoid arthritis. But you don't need an electrical device to activate the relaxation nervous system. The vagus nerve is the fastest way to activate the vagus nerve is with your breathing. It's extremely receptive to slow, deep breathing, vagus, the vagus nerve. Slow, deep breathing activates the vagus nerve, relaxes the body, tells the body to stand down. And the net result is significant reduction in rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. This is what I'm telling you guys. Tell the body to stand down. And don't give the body a reason to, to be defensive in the first place. Of course, that means foods, mostly. All right, Rose in Virginia, West Virginia. What's up, Rose? How you doing? Hi, Ben. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Good morning. Uh, well, I've got a, a bit of a conundrum here. I was recently diagnosed. I went to the hospital, long story short. I was having weight loss, which I attributed to my stressful job, which I quit. And then uh, I, I suddenly fell ill. I thought it was some kind of, you know, virus flu, something. Uh, turned out I ended up in the hospital. I had a stroke in, in the middle of all this. And I was diagnosed with polythysemia. Hmm. And so uh, during the course of my hospital stay, you know, I also had high blood pressure, which I'd never had. Same ever. thing. It's all related to the same thing. Right. Well, that's what I kind of figured, you know, the hemodynamics being all mixed Exactly. Up. How do you know right. about that? Are you a nurse? What I'm a, yeah, I'm a nurse. Oh, yeah. you're a nurse. Oh, well, then you should understand I, perfectly here. Polycythemia yeah. is when your body isn't getting enough oxygen, so it's cranking out the cells. It's cranking out the hemoglobin uh, because, it's, because your tissues aren't being oxygenated. You follow uh, me? Yes, yes, exactly. They call it, uh, uh, they say it's un mostly unknown. Oh, this, it's, it could be linked to respiratory disorders, other things, cancer, God forbid. But here's the huh. deal. You're not getting oxygenated. So you're making too, your body's trying to get oxygen. It's trying okay. to make more hemoglobin. So what you got to do is you got to figure out why it's not getting oxygenated. And there's only one reason, really. It's dirty blood. So it's this vicious downward cycle, the downward spiral, where your body's attempting to get more oxygen because it's clogged, because the vessels, the circulatory vessels are clogged up and that creates more clogging, which creates more need for oxygen, which creates more cell, more hemoglobin. And okay. this, you see what I'm saying? So you got to break the cycle here, Rose, what okay. you got. Okay. So what you got to do is figure out why is your blood dirty in the first place? That's always the first thing to do. And you know, as you, you know, what I'm going to tell you here, you got to look at, the, you got to look at the foods. You got to look at the digestion. You know, that's the main reason why the blood becomes dirty in the first place. The second thing is you want to do. The second thing you want to do is work with your blood sugar because sugar represents blood dirt, to put it to put it you know oh, simply. Okay. So you got to watch your sugar. Well, you make I've sure. always been hypoglycemic. So That's pre-diabetes. Hypoglycemia is pre-diabetes. It means okay. your insulin is is super sensitive. You follow me? It means okay. you you got you're cranking out insulin. Your body's really receptive. It's really jumpy, and that happens before you get diabetes. So you're uh, on the road. So you got to stabilize the blood sugar. Deep breathing, getting on a rebounder, anything you could do to improve oxygenation and movement of lymphatic fluid and circulatory fluid. And then don't forget about plain old nutritional deficiencies, particularly in the B vitamins, 
because they're important for and, and essential fatty acids. They're all important for making red blood cells. So uh, I'd be looking at blood dirt and then a nutritional supplement program, a uh, good nutritional supplement program. You're probably on a good nutritional supplement well, program. Well, I, I I've been on the tangy tangerine for God, more than like that. almost two years. So you need, I need more, more than that. That's I the minimum more. wage. Okay. That's the minimum wage. Get on the Healthy okay. Star Pack. Get extra vitamin E. You want 400 international units of vitamin E, very protective for the, the blood cell membranes. You want to keep the red blood cells separated in the, in the circulatory system. Okay. They're clumping up. Everything's clogging up, basically. So you got to keep everything separate, and vitamin E can help you. The omega fats can help you there. Uh, make sure that you're doing the, uh, the entire Healthy Start Pack. You might want to do the Fucoid Z, another important blood thinner. Don't forget your slow, deep breathing, practicing slow, deep breathing, okay. moving your body around, caloric restriction, fasting. Uh, lymphatic massage, relaxing the body. These are all things you want to do. You're looking at tissue oxygenation, basically. Okay. Well, I, you know, this, this job that I had was, uh, I was just driving around all day. It was, I wasn't getting any exercise. It was well, bad. Get it a rebounder. Bad. Get yourself a mini yeah. trampoline. Put it in the living room. Watch TV yeah. and jump. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank well, you, thank Rose. You. So, um, now, uh, they also, they put me on, in the hospital, they put me on hydrochlorothiazide and on... Yeah, they're um, trying to thin your blood. They're trying to get the water out of your... back. And yeah, they're... So, they're... I, you know, I'm trying to manage that. My, my systolic is, ve is very normal. In fact, you know, it's below normal, but my dystolic is still running... The lowest it's been is like 85, or 75 was the lowest. It's been running like 80, and the pulse is still high. Well, they're, they're not treating the problem. They're just going yeah. at the symptom, the, the circulatory symptom. The diuretic is there to help you lose some fluid. That'll lower right, your blood right. pressure that way. And then uh, uh, the Norvac is a calcium channel blocker, so they poison the heart, basically. That's how, and they poison the, the, the right. blood vessels. So, I, you know, I'm just trying to, so if I can get the, the other problem solved, that blood pressure. Yeah, secondary. Did you hear me talking about secondary and primary today? Oh, and yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll talk earlier. about it tomorrow. It's a secondary issue. You got yeah. to go to the primary cause, which is in the blood sugar system, the digestive system, and your adrenal thyroid system. Your, your hyperadrenal, your oh, dysglycemic, I have been out. Yeah, all of that, I have been. Yeah. all of that. Yeah. Okay. But the good news is you can take care of this yourself, and you could do it starting today, and you can notice a significant difference starting today. And that's the that's the bright side. That's the good okay. news. Is you well, can thank notice you, Ben. Thank you, thank Rose. You. Have a beautiful day. Right. Okay. You. Bye bye. All right. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for, if you called, I apologize we left you on hold, but that's why you got to call in early. Thank you so much for listening. Please check out my skin health products at truthtreatments.com, our retinol 5% gel, truth balm, truth serum, and truth omega-6 healing cream. And also, if you want to join the Brightside Ben team, please call 866-735-2470. Love to have you as part of the team. You can also sign up or buy products at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Thanks for listening. Have an awesome, spectacular, Beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.